Okay, good morning everybody and I know my colleagues right across Somerset have been talking about National Picnic Week but because I love picnics so much and in a past life I um, did a lot of work around healthy eating, I'm here to share with you a few more ideas. Uh, I've got my little picnic blanket behind me and not under me um, just to try and add a little bit of atmosphere this morning. Um, I've got a few ideas in front of me and one of my work colleagues, uh, Tracy Bland over in West Somerset, we have done a lot of work about healthy eating and healthy picnics. Uh, so that's really why I wanted to talk to you this morning. And I've got, sort of, you can see my lovely selection of bowls in front of me. Um, which I'm going to talk to you about in a minute. I know that the teams have talked to you on my little piece of paper here. Um, I know that you've probably all looked at Somerset Life website, the Somerset Live Life and Live um, websites, the Country Mummy website, the Visit Exmoor website and the National Trust. They've all got some excellent ideas um, of where to picnic. I have to say a lot of them are on the wonderful Quantox um, where I'm lucky enough to live. So one of the things that um, a lot of mums are faced with, a lot of older people, um, including myself, are issues to do with their digestion. That can add to the stress and the, the difficulty um, of going on picnics. We've got lots of teenagers um, becoming vegetarian and vegan. Uh, so for that reason, that's why I've got my little selection with me today. Uh, I'm just going to lean forward and you'll see what works really well with not just children, but with my mum, who's become a very fussy eater at 82. She struggles with her memory. Um, she struggles with eating popping lots of nice little things in my lovely tiffin tin makes her excited and I think children are the same so what I've done this morning is I've steamed some I don't know whether you can see that I've steamed some green beans and although I'm going to talk to you in, in a minute about my healthy pasta salad I've got what I know is that both older people and children can struggle with that combination of food together. So there's my lovely scooped um, green beans and my little organic carrots they are. In my next tiffin tin, I've got some homegrown tomatoes that I've just got from a neighbor and some slices of cucumber. That is actually rice pasta, which you can now buy in most supermarkets. That's a Sainsbury's one. It was 99p, very, very reasonable indeed. And then right in the bottom, there's my lovely, my absolute favourite, crispy fried chickpeas. Now, everybody seems to love these and they are really, really easy to do. You simply get your um, can of chickpeas, you drain them off, you pop them onto a baking tray, add a tiny bit of oil, and then you add on your favourite spices. You can see that these are quite yellow. So I've got coriander, cumin, a little bit of ginger, a bit of cinnamon, a uh, bit of turmeric. Pop them onto a baking tray high in the oven and they are absolutely delicious. If any of you have been to places like Turkey, Greece, this is a normal snack. Now, what is great about beans is that they are a complex carbohydrate. What that means is a slow release of sugar into your bloodstream. So if you're somebody who struggles with your blood sugar, um, if you're somebody who's maybe put on a few pounds over, which is most of us during COVID because we've all been snacking out and treating ourselves to loads of gorgeous food, what complex carbohydrates do is fill us up but without give us, giving us that high fat calorie load. It fills us up and it allows that slow release of blood sugar. So that's what's good about those. And just to have, a, as you saw, I had my lovely little 
um, carrots in there. What I've made here is some um, green pea hummus. Now, as you all probably know by now, it is dead cinchy to make hummus. Green pea hummus has to be the cheapest one that you can make to buy a pack of um, split green peas. Um, you can buy them in loads of Oriental Asian food stores. You can buy them in Tesco, Sainsbury, everywhere. You can get packs for about 49p. So to make a vast amount of hummus to, to um, feed about 15 people, it's going to cost you about 15p. So it is such good value. I would advise making a huge amount up. Just um, cook your split peas, pop in your olive oil, bit of lemon juice, garlic if you want to. It's an option. Not everybody loves garlic. And then bulk make it freeze some into Tupperware containers and pop it in the freezer. It is such an economical thing to make. I've noticed green pea hummus on sale in some quite posh restaurants, including the River Cafe in Bristol. And uh, it, it, it's proving quite a hit and a big hit with me especially. Another thing, thinking about dietary problems that a lot of people um, are struggling with, a lot of people either are a little bit sensitive to gluten, it can add up, can't it? So those loaves of bread um, can be 250, uh, three pounds. So this is an idea of a little picnic alternative that I've made for you this morning. Um, what I've made, and again, thinking about younger people, I'm thinking even about fussy teenagers. And again, I do think about my mum who is really struggling with eating um, because of her age, struggling uh, a little bit with um, the trauma of the men mental health during this tricky sort of time. So in here, what I've done this morning is to make um, old fashioned drop scones. Uh, of course, we call them blinny when they're made of buckwheat, but it allows you to, to you, again, you can make absolutely loads of these fairly low cost can you see those what i've got in here is buckwheat um, and quinoa flour there is an egg and i have put a raising agent and they pop up and i mean those with just a little bit of hummus on a tomato on top absolutely scrumptious if you were to lay those out on a tray um, that actually can look quite spectacular as well so um, it's just allowing you a little bit of flexibility with um, anyone you know who struggles with wheat because of course we are a nation who absolutely loves sandwiches and of course we love sandwiches but this is just an idea there we are I'll just show you again uh, for any of those um, people who really can't tolerate gluten so the second thing I've made for you this morning um, is i'm a huge fan of tortillas i don't know about you guys out there but in order to take them on a, a picnic um i quite often make them in my yorkshire pudding tin so down at the bottom here i don't know whether you can see that i'm just going to show you coming forward i have got um the traditional tortilla mix i have got potato and onion and I have a daughter who's staying with me um, for a few weeks now. Now, my daughter is a vegetarian, but she does not eat dairy products. So on the top of my um, little tortillas here, I have got vegan cheese. You can see probably the strands. It does not melt as well as a dairy cheese. Nevertheless, it's giving a lovely, lovely taste. And then down here, I've actually made for myself a lunch. I'm, I'm an, I absolutely adore beetroot. So my little tortillas have got beetroot and carrot, um, one or two um, bits of like oregano in. I love oregano and egg. And you can see how they've puffed up. But again, I just stress again for children who maybe slices look a bit big, they, they, they just look slightly different. Um, I think this appeals to those fussier, trickier, eater, trickier eaters. So that's what I've got there. 
Um, now, over here, what I absolutely love, you can see my big bowl here. What I absolutely love is pasta salads. Uh, I hope you do too. And it does allow for, again, you can use, um, again, a lot of the major supermarkets. You can cheaply buy uh, alternatives to um, whole wheat pasta. Whole wheat pasta is great. Doesn't suit everybody. So there are loads of alternatives. This that I've got here, that is a rice pasta. Um, it's come out, it's a penne. I think, you know, that's come out fairly solid. Not all of them do, I have to say. You can think, oh, this is a bit slimy. But what you need to do is simply run it, run, run it under the tap and pop on a little bit of oil. So I thought I'd show you what I'm going to do. I've got that lovely uh, bowl here. Obviously, that goes into your Tupperware container, which you're going to take on your picnic. And I've got ideas here of what I would add um, to my picnic. Um, I have got, so what I've done is I've done some roasted courgettes. I've got those growing in the garden. Um, I don't know whether any of you've got neighbours, friends, courgettes are going absolutely bonkers at the moment. Round where I live in Watch It, there's lots of people selling off uh, bags of courgettes for 50p, which on my morning walks, I roam around and I come home with my lovely bags of runner beans and my courgettes. So there we are. Roasted courgettes um, are going to go in my salad. So let me just pop those in there. Yummy, absolutely love them. I've got parsley growing in the garden. I know it's not for everybody. Um, I think children maybe struggle sometimes with raw raw um, herbs, but it is highly nutritious. Parsley, it's high in iron and uh, fresh herbs just can give that extra special taste, can't it? So I'm just going to take a little pinch and just sort of pop that in. See, that's looking quite pretty already because we're all about attractive food. No point in eating claggy and attractive food. Who wants that? Um, and here we go. So my second lot of beans. I know we have had chickpeas earlier, lovely crispy fried chickpeas. But I have got some cannellini beans there. I think they're a lovely Mediterranean um, type bean. So I'm going to put those in and just give my lovely pasta salad a stir. That's looking fairly attractive already. Um, I think we all know how good avocado is for us. And so I've got a lovely bowl of avocado, which I'm just going to pop in there. So there we go. The avocado is going in. Ooh. Or at least I'm trying to put it in. There we go. There's my little spoon. And I'm just going to give that a stir around. It's absolutely gorgeous. Obviously, those bits of avocado or courgette could go in your tiffin tin, couldn't they? If you have a mem fa friend, family member who does not like things mixed up. My niece was very like that. And that's where the tiffin tin came in for me. Presenting. Lovely little bits and pieces, but not put together in a pasta salad. You'd have absolutely died if I'd tried to give her that. Um, this is where those lovely green beans you saw earlier, they're in the tiffin tin. But I'm just going to pop some of those into my salad. I do think it's important for things to look good. So that's why I've got a few bits of sweet corn to pop in there. So I'm going to give my pasta salad a stir. And then just to give it a lovely bit of colour, I've got more of those local homegrown tomatoes and I'm just going to pop them in like that. Um, there we are. And give that a stir. So that's looking very pretty already, isn't it? And onto that, um, I always make my own dressings. Um, I hope you do too. If you don't or you feel um a little uncomfortable about it or you feel um not so confident about it um what i would say is that you cannot go wrong 
with the classic French combination. So that's three tablespoons of olive oil to one of vinegar or lemon juice. That is the correct um, chemical combination to produce an absolutely excellent dressing. Um, my absolute favourite, it has got a little bit of sweetness in, I've got honey here, uh, a teaspoon of honey I pop into that combination and I do love a little bit of mustard so I've got that there. Obviously you don't have to get this mustard, um, a lot of supermarkets have jars about this size for about 50p so um, it needn't cost anything. I would say always make, again, um, think, thinking about those times that we are too busy to do much food prep, I always make my dressing uh, in a jar. Here's my jar that uh, I can get a bit oily on the bottom. I pop that in my fridge. So what I do is to um, make a bulk amount of dressing, pop it in there, uh, and each time I use it, I get that out of the fridge. So I just wonder if there's any out of you out of you, there's um, have got any questions about oh I can see one of my colleagues is just talking about how she loves a vinaigrette with minced garlic in. Um, and I do too. Um, but lime juice. That's, again, something really handy to have, have in the fridge. That's, again, bought really, really cheaply from most of the major supermarkets. Lime and honey can give a very particular um, taste, especially if you were trying to create, say, an ambience of a Mexican um, food dish. Um, it's a really, really sort of summery, summery taste. Uh, I am going to leave you there because this is just my little healthy eating um, picnic ideas for this summer. So thank you all so much for watching this morning. And we, the West Somerset Village Agents, are really looking forward to talking to you all last week. I think we're all going to be um, very enthusiastic about our jobs, all of us in West Somerset really feel very strongly about the work we do. We're a very, very passionate team. Um, we are very lucky because um, we very much like um, all of our team members and we work very, very well together. We're very different individuals, but I'm looking forward to you hearing all about the different personalities that make up your West Somerset team. So please do, any of you out there, please get in touch with a village agent. If you need any support and help of any kind, you'd be amazed about what we can help with. So we really are here to help with any sort of inquiries, no matter how small, and no matter how big. Um, remember, it's confidential. So it really um, doesn't matter. Nobody is going to think you're foolish, stupid, whatever it is, if you phone us with a question. It is confidential and we will endeavour to help you. OK, so thanks very much for tuning in this morning.